Hello everyone, Cat Weasel here, welcome to the channel and welcome back to our play-by video of Eldritch Horror and Cities in Ruin where we're just about to start turn 11 but first of all, yes, we have to make a quick visit to Cat Weasel's Cock Up Corner so what did I get wrong last turn? A couple of things, first of all, Vincent needs a clue because he killed the Ancient Chthonian with the sword so he's owed an extra clue, so there we go, he gets his clue. And he now has three clues. What next? Carolyn Fern, she used the security squad on the encounter. It was not a combat encounter. What made it even more annoying is Bob did the same thing a few turns ago and he actually remembered it wasn't a combat encounter and said specifically that he couldn't use the security squad. And then here we are, turn 10, I do exactly the same thing with Carolyn and forget. So there you go, that's age for you. So because she couldn't use the security squad, it means she had to use her strength. Her strength is two, so she's only going to get two die. Dun, dun, dun. But she does have a focus. Come on, Carolyn, let's be having it. A six, amazing. Didn't even have to use a focus. Awesome. Okay, so well done, Carolyn. You're a star. And everything is honky-dory. The really good thing about that, of course, being I don't have to change everything around. She'd have had to get, <laughs> she'd have had to get a leg injury and lose some health. But fortunately, we have managed to avoid that. Right, so that is it for Cat Weasel's Cock Up Corner. So we can find out what happened previously on Cities in Ruin. <laughs> What the? Pete exclaimed as the ship entered the port of Tokyo. A full-on entourage of colourfully dressed Japanese courtiers and a column of guards awaited him. Archie sneered. Told you we were being followed. A small man in a suit ran up the gangplank, bowed and handed Pete a very fancy card. Some sort of invitation. The fellow bowed again. The Emperor foretold your coming and would honour you with an audience. He would, would he? Pete stated. He was not much for authority figures. Yes, he requires your presence and your aid. Pete looked at the ready guards and at the entourage. Well, not much choice in it anyway. He shrugged. Let's go. It turned out that the Emperor was having monstrous nightmares and visions. He had seen Pete slay the Chthonian in one of them, so he knew that the Drifter could help. Using the mystic powers of the fetch stick, Ashkan entered the Emperor's dreams and he found the monster that was besetting him with nightmares. It was another Chthonian, though not as foul as the one that he had faced. He gave the Emperor the location so they could go and dispatch the thing, and the Emperor did that immediately. Later in the hotel that the Emperor had set Pete up in, he confided in Archie. I saw it, Arch. How we can end this? We are not going to stop in Shanghai. The world renderer has appeared in Egypt, and I can stop it. If I do, this ends, and then Shud Mel will be done for. Back to the pits with him, or wherever that foul elder god comes from. Archie seemed excited, but pensive. That is good news, he nearly shouted manically. Pete wanted to rest up for the trip, and retired to the bedroom. He slept on the floor, as the bed was too darn soft for him. He was not used to such luxuries. Late at night, Pete awoke with a start. A shadow loomed over him with a sharp object held high. Archie screamed. Shudmel will return, and you, a damned vagrant, won't stop him. Before Pete could react, the knife plunged deeply into his side. He was stunned, and Archie raised the knife for a killing blow. Duke leapt from the darkness with a snarl, the old hound's teeth sinking into Archie's throat. With a gurgling cry, the man fell to the floor. He struggled, but Duke had him good and ended Archie in moments. Pete rolled over and tried to sit up. Severe pain shot up his ribs. He was hurt bad. At least he was not dead. Duke came over and nuzzled Pete with his blood-stained muzzle. The dog whined. It's okay, boy. I will be okay. I owe you one, buddy. Pete slowly rose to his knees. He needed to get medical attention. This is why it's just you and me, boy. Now let's see this to the end. No more distractions. So there's Pete. Yes, Archie, the fiend, tried to do him in, 
but he's still alive he's still got two health and he's got five sanity he's still got a single clue he's got a couple of focus he's got duke he's blessed medical journal king james's bible mystic stroll old journal practiced fetch stick satchel of the void and moxie yes he's ready to rumble so that's it for pete next up is vincent lee after returning from the portal things all seemed so much clearer to vincent he knew that there was no more to be done in giza and he knew that he needed to deal with the two worm-like creatures that had evaded him in africa just as vincent had suspected Back at the camp in Africa, another portal now stood where the tents had been. Close to, the remains of one of the creatures lay upon the floor. Vincent learned from Carolyn Fern that a number of Japanese Imperial Guard had been sent by the Emperor to kill the beast. She told Vincent there had been no sign of the larger beast. But as the words left her mouth, this other huge beast burst into the clearing. Vincent drew his sword and plunged it deep into the mass of tentacles. The beast twisted, tying itself in knots, and then lay motionless. Vincent knew he needed to go to the portal. He told Carolyn to wait, as he would need her help when he returned. Vincent stepped into the portal. Once again, strange thoughts entered his mind, but this time there were no stairs. He felt trapped and unable to move. Strange alien bodies lay dead on the floor around him, and a feeling of utter panic filled him. Some sort of machine clicked close by, and Vincent found he could understand the symbols inscribed upon it. Once again there was a bright light, and as Vincent looked at the symbols, he felt himself being drawn into it. Back in the clearing, Carolyn helped Vincent to his feet. He was clutching a wooden mask, covered in the same symbols as those used on the strange machine. So, Vincent, yes, fortunately he didn't have any ally so he was okay he managed to kill the ancient chthonian we gave him the extra clue he needed so he's now got three and he's doing pretty well he's got um six sanity and four health the mask of the watcher that he found when he closed the gate he's still got sealing the old ones and courier run he's composed skullduggery and relentless he is still blessed and he has his Takuna elixir and, of course, the sword that he is killing things with. So that is it for Vincent. Next up is Carolyn Fern. It took several days to travel through the dense jungle, and it was slow going since they weren't sure where they were headed. The guide assured them that they were moving in the right direction. Suddenly, they found themselves in the same clearing as before. Carolyn was very surprised to see that Dr. Lee was also there. Suddenly, several men, dressed all in black, had attacked the smaller tentacle monster with swords. They were brutal in their assault, and soon the thing was forced to retreat, and in a puff of smoke, the men were also gone. Carolyn was going to ask Vincent if she knew who those men were, when she saw his eyes were blood red, and he jumped forward in a fury of motion, his sword cutting the larger monster to ribbons. It was also forced to retreat. Vincent wasn't finished as he sheathed his sword. He motioned to Carolyn to wait where she was and stepped through the portal nearby. Carolyn turned to her team and asked them for their next move, when Laura shouted a warning, but it was too late. Carolyn was shocked to see St Smythe strike her with a large branch. She fell to the ground, seeing St Smythe run off into the thick of the jungle. The security team burst into action and followed. Laura had to run to Carolyn's aid and started to bandage the head injury. Just over an hour later, the security team returned. Somehow, St Smythe had eluded them. They examined all their gear and belongings and discovered that the Winchester rifle had been sabotaged. They told Carolyn that it was good that she hadn't used it because it would have backfired in her hand and probably killed her. That's why St Smythe had handed it over so easily. They repaired the rifle and then plan their next move. So, St. Smythe, yes, another dastardly ally, saying, welcome to Eldritch Horror, Carolyn Fern. But she survived. She's still got two health, and she's got a full complement of sanity at seven. She's fixed the Winchester. She's still got Laura, the personal assistant, and the security squad, and the Otherworld Codex, the Dream Diary, and, of course, the Tarot Card Death 13 awesome stuff right so that's good oh 
Death Count 13, I have popped the Doom back. We did solve a mystery, so the Doom had to go from 11 back to 12. So I have done that in between turns. So we're fine now. Okay, that's it for Carolyn. Next up is Rita Young. Rita had trained hard to represent the USA in the World Athletics Finals in Shanghai. It was heartbreaking to arrive and witness firsthand the devastating floods that had brought the city low and ruined the games. That training had paid off, she thought, as she dug deep and put on a burst of speed to try and increase the distance between her and the slavering, frenzied horror that was loping behind her. The flooded ruins had created an obstacle course like none that Rita had ever faced before, and she could feel herself tiring. Somehow it had kept up, and only her athleticism had kept her from the flesh-rending claws and fangs of her pursuer. She vaulted up and over an eight-foot wall and deftly landed and rolled on the other side, only to stare in despair to see that she was trapped in a high-walled alleyway. She gasped, deep lungfuls of dank, fetid air to catch her breath. Above her radiated a plethora of lights that danced across the low clouds. The world was going to hell, it seemed. She turned at the sound of the guttural chuckle to see that her pursuer was perched on the wall, staring hungrily down at her. The smell of old, spoiled meat washed over her and made her wretch. Not like this, she whimpered, sensing that her imminent and brutal death was nigh. As it jumped down from the wall and slowly advanced, sensing it had an easy meal at hand, Rita's demeanour hardened and she glared intensely and coldly into its eyes. The creature cocked its head and missed a step. Was that a sudden flicker of doubt she had seen in its eyes? Rita's fierce competitive nature erupted from her and she ran at speed towards the creature. She was damned if she was going to be easy meat and one thing was for certain, win or lose, she would make it suffer. And there we go with Rita. So she's got seven health, five sanity, a clue, and she is rugged. And she is ready to rock and roll. And she was our final investigator for previously on. And let's get on with the action phase. <laughs> And here we are at the action phase with Ashcan. What is Ashcan going to do? Well, for his first action, he's going to travel and he's going to travel to Shanghai. Hello, Rita. For his second action, he's going to use the component action on his sheet and he's going to move along a train path. Remember, that doesn't count as a travel action, it's a component action. That gets him to space 17 in India, where he's allowed to do another action. And the action will be to rest. Now, he's already at full sanity, so he will just get two health back for the medical journal and obviously the health he gets anyway through resting. That puts him onto four stamina, which is good. Okay, so that is it for Pete. Next up is... Vincent Lee and here we are with Vincent Lee so what's Vincent going to do well he's going to use his Takoon Elixir first off because he just loves it item Elixir test will if you pass you may spend one sanity to gain a boon condition so let's put that in there can we see it we can and he's going to test Will. He's Will's five and he's blessed. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Let's have a success. We get many successes. So he has to spend a sanity. That puts him down to five sanity. And he can get a boom condition. But it's going to be a righteous condition because he already has composed and he already has blessed. So we'll give him a quick shuffle and a quick cut and then we'll get to the first one. Blessed, martial prowess, studious, attuned, elusive, righteous. So this is his boon. Unfortunately we can't have a look at it because Bob is no longer with us. But uh, when you perform a focus action or a rest action, gain one focus or recover one sanity. 
on a reckoning we may flip this card so if we get a reckoning this turn we can flip the card and hopefully it'll be something good so we'll give that to vincent we'll take his tacoon elixir and also give that back to vincent let's get rid of those and what's he going to do for his second action? Well, for his second action, he is actually going to rest, I believe. Is that the case? He is. So he's going to recover one sanity. And so we're giving his sanity back. He is also going to gain a focus because he is righteous. And when you rest, you can gain a focus. So he gets his sanity back and the focus and he will also get two health why because he gets one health for resting and he gets an additional health because he's a doctor so that will put him up to six and he's back to six health and six sanity brilliant and he is righteous so he's doing ever so well isn't he okay so that's it for vincent next up is carolyn fern and here we are with Carolyn. What's Carolyn going to do? Well, she's going to rest. Now, she's at full sanity, but she's only at two health. And she's going to get another two health, putting her up to four, because she's on the same space as Vincent Lee, and he's a doctor. So that puts her up to four health, which is great. And what's she going to do for her second action? Well, she is going to move. And she's going to move down here to southern africa and space 15 right that's it for carolyn next up is rita and here we are with rita in shanghai well first of all she's going to do a component action from her sheet which allows her to spend either a sanity or a health to gain a talent condition she's going to spend obviously health because that's what she's got the most of that puts her down to six health and let's get a talent condition woot so here we go, give it a quick shuffle, and let's hope for something really funky. The cut, and we get Martial Prowess, yes, brilliant. Talent, when resolving a combat encounter you may gain plus three strength during that encounter. If you do, flip this card before resolving the test. We probably won't need it against the ghoul, but uh, it's good to have, because, well, basically she's a face puncher, so brilliant. Right, so she now has martial prowess. Very good. Put that on her player tray. And what's she going to do for her final action? She is going to, I think, gain a focus. In fact, she is. So she gets a focus as well. Always good to have a re-roll. So she's got martial prowess and she has gained a focus. That is it for the action phase. Next up is the encounter phase. And here we are at the encounter phase with Ashkan. What's Ashkan going to do? Well, he is going to have a general encounter in a city. So we'll need the general deck. We'll probably also need this. And uh, let's shuffle away and see what he gets. So cut. City. A secret society made up of the city's wealthiest elites contacts you with an invitation. They would like to initiate you into their inner circle. You may gain a dark pack condition to gain a promise of power condition. Well, we're going to leave that. Now, if we were in a lot worse shape than we were in, and given that we're on our final mystery, I might have been tempted. But the fact is, we're doing pretty well, and dark packs are just bad news. They're good to have right near the end of a game because there's very little chance that they will sort of trigger but uh, as it is we're doing okay so we're going to just pass up the chance of doing that so that was a very quick encounter for Ashcan. that is it for his encounter phase next up is vincent lee and here we are with vincent so what's he going to do well he's going to have very similar a generic encounter but his is going to be in the wilderness so let's shuffle again and do another cut and see what we get so wilderness 
you try to kick open the door of an abandoned shack. Test strength. Oh, let's make sure we can see that. Let's pop it in here. There we go. His strength is three and he is blessed, which is excellent news. So come on. And we get two successes. Awesome. If you pass, the lock breaks and inside you find something useful. Gain one random item asset from the deck. And there's the fail condition. But we passed. So we need a random item from the deck, not from the reserve. So hopefully it'll be something good against world renders. Item we want. Oh, straight up an ancient tome. Item relic tome. Action. You study the words of the long dead language, test law. If you pass, you may spend one sanity to gain one clue, one spell, or one task unique asset. Well, I don't think we'll be using that, but you know, let's put it with the rest of the stuff that he has. And that is it for Vincent. And next up will be Carolyn Fern. And here we are with Carolyn. And guess what? Yes, she's going to have a generic encounter. A city one in this case. So, another shuffle. And let's have a look. A night watchman tells you that a crate of weapons has gone missing from his warehouse. You offer him some money to learn more. Test influence. So her influence is four because we've got the personal assistant and we've got a reroll because we've got the personal assistant. So that's funky. We also have a focus. So four dice. And we get a five. Five and three ones. Ooh. But a pass is all we needed. Let's have a look. If you pass, he sends you to an alley. Gain one random weapon asset from the deck. Woohoo! And there's the fail condition, but we passed. So that's great. Let's get the asset deck out again. This time we need to look through it till we find a weapon. So there we go. Cut as normal. Forbidden Secrets is a tome. Dynamite is a weapon. Oh, <laughs> just the thing. Oh no, it's a physical weapon, isn't it? But we can still chuck it in against the... Oh no, it's exact, It's useless. It's useless against the world render because it's physically uh, resistant. Well, never mind. We may find another monster we can chuck it at. Item weapon, action. Each monster on your space loses three health, then discard this card. So at least it's useful for protecting her, should any normal monsters appear. So she finds some dynamite. Very good. And that is it for Carolyn Fern. Our final investigator in the encounter phase will be Rita Young. And here we are with Rita. And she's in Shanghai. Now, she's going to try and close the gate, but first, she's got to kill a monster. She's got to kill a ghoul. So, let's have a look at the ghoul. For the horror check, we're going to get plus one die. So, she's got three will, so that'd be four will. So, that's pretty good. We only need a single success there to avoid losing sanity. Strength test, no modifier, and we need to get two successes. We definitely need to get two successes because we do not want a paranoia condition, which we'll get if we lose a health but at least to kill it, we only need one success. So plus one for the will check. She's going to roll four dice. So one, two, three, four. And come on. And she gets two sixes. We will definitely keep those. That is super. So then we go to the strength test. She's got a strength of four. She does have a clue and a focus. I'm not going to use martial prowess, I don't think. I think with four dice and a couple of re-rolls, we should be okay. And yes, we've got a re-roll with rugged. So I think we'll be all right. So three re-rolls, come on, we can do it. 
So, four dice. Killer goose. And we've got one success. So we have killed the ghoul, but we don't want that nasty condition, do we? So first of all, we're going to use the re-roll of Rugged. Damn it! Then we're going to use her focus. Come on. A six, yes. So, Tosta's that focus, but she got two successes, which is what we wanted. We have killed the ghoul. Brilliant. Back to the bag with you. Now we can try and shut this gate. So we need the Otherworld Encounter deck. Here we are. Full undercut. Let's see what we get. Oh, we're going to the Dreamlands. In Dialath Lean, a suspicious looking thug in a dark robe offers you his help. However, he warns you that he's a fugitive being hunted by the Prince's agents and will require your protection. Oh, strength minus two? Right, it's just a strength test. I don't think Martial Prowess comes into it. We've got a clue and we're going to be rolling two dice. So we'll roll the two successes we just got before. A five. Oh, yes, we rock. Past condition. You defend the man from his assailants and he gratefully invites you aboard his galley to return you to the waking world. Close this gate. Yes, yes, yes. Shanghai is shut. Put it over there. Let's read the rest. And we've probably got to do another test. You normally have to. As you speak to him, it is clear he knows many forgotten truths. You may become delayed to improve your law. It's a may. We're not going to become de delayed. We're right near the end of the game. So if it was at the start of the game, we might go for that. But we're near the end of the game. Forget it. I'm sure he's a very interesting man. But all we wanted to do was close the gate. So what a encounter phase that was. We have done brilliantly, people. Right, oh, so that is it for Rita Young. That is it for the encounter phase. Next up, it's the laugh and chuckle phase. And here we are at the laugh and chuckle phase. So we need the laugh and chuckle deck. This is stage three of the Mythos now, so don't know what we're gonna get. And it's a yellow, so I think there are four yellows and two greens in the final stage so one of the yellows has gone uh, oh tentacles brilliant so first of all we've got omen track movement which is going to mean we're going to get doom track movement because we move on to a red sunburst we have two red sunburst gates at the amazon and rome so we go down to 10 doom what is next we have got reckoning fun Okay, so first of all, it is monsters. We have a dole, and I think this moves towards the nearest investigator. It does. It's not going to get close enough to cause us a problem. Who is going to be closest? What? I think it's going to be Carolyn, isn't it? Yes. So one, two, three. Yep. Yeah. So it's going to move to Buenos Aires. Then, have we got any? Oh, yeah, we've got the world render. Oh, what's the world render? What's it? Oh, yes, it's roller die, isn't it? On one or two, we move the doom again. All right, okay, where is the stuff? And come on, not a one or a two, not a one or a two, a five. Fantastic. So we don't move doom, there's nothing else. No, none of the other monsters have a reckoning on. So we move on to Shud. And Shud wants us to get rid of two health and or sanity. Okay, we will start with Pete. Ooh, he'll get rid of one of each, I think. So, oh no, in fact, he'll get rid of two sanity because he finds sanity the easiest to get back with Duke and the... King James Bible, so he loses two sanity. 
Vincent, he's going to lose two health because he's a doctor and he finds that easiest to get back. Carolyn, she's going to lose two sanity because she's a psychologist and finds that easiest to get back. And finally, we've got Rita. Rita's a bit of a tough cookie and I think she'll lose two health. So she goes down to six health, I think. Is it? No, five health. I can't add. So she's now on five health and five sanity. So that's pretty, pretty grim. But we're still, we're, we're okay. It's not like previously where poor old Lily and poor old Bob were really struggling. So that should. Who's next? What's next? It is the rumour card. We haven't got any. So that means possessions and conditions. So we'll go through Pete. Pete has just got his bless condition. Let's go on, Pete. We need to keep this Pete. A five, good lad. So he keeps that. He's done really well on that. Then we have uh, Vincent. Oh, he's got his righteous condition. Yeah, he's got two, he's got blessed and righteous. We'll do righteous first, because we want to see what's on the other side. Come on, something good. You may flip this card. Bring the fight to them. It's this cult member one again. You feel invigorated as you burst into the room. Cult members scatter in all directions, but the authorities round them up without a single cultist escaping. The information they give you is highly illuminating. Advance the active mystery by one, or gain two clues. We're going to advance the active mystery by one, there is only one single monster this time. There's not two. So I'm sure we are okay to put two health on it. But I am just going to check that. So I won't be a moment. Awesome. Yes, there's only one. So that means we get to put two health on the world render card. What these two health on here means is its toughness goes down by two. So instead of being six toughness, it is now four toughness. So that is awesome. So brilliant stuff. Great. Then we've got a roll for his bless condition. So come on. Come on, Vincent. A two. Damn it. He loses his bless condition. But at least we got two toughness off the world render. But uh, yes, I would have preferred to... Where am I going with that? I would have preferred to have kept his blessed condition. So that's a bit of a blow. Okay, uh, that's it for Vincent. Next up is Carolyn. She has got nothing with a reckoning on. Neither has Rita. So great getting two toughness knocked off that. Not so great. Uh, poor old um, Vincent losing his blessed condition but he does have that Tycoon Elixir so possibly get one back I mean even if he gets a righteous condition again that would be good so yes bit of a blow but uh, at least Ashcan Pete is still blessed then we've got to yeah so that's it for the reckonings isn't it and next we have got to do a gate spawn which is Istanbul so we know where this is going, so let's set this up, and we'll need a monster monster. So Istanbul is a green comet gate, there it is, let's see what monster we get, get down to the bottom as normal, and we get a deep one hybrid, always nice. And we'll stick him on a stand. There we go. Great. So that's the Deep One Hybrid and the gate sorted. And we move on to the card itself. Augur of Destruction. The old woman's fingers dig through the deer's entrails reading the future by some unfathomable means. In the end, she warns of certain doom approaching for a large city. Dun, dun, dun. Event. 
Draw and resolve a disaster unless investigators as a group spend clues equal to half the investigators. I think we've got enough clues, so this one's not so bad. We have got five clues. One for Ashcan, three for Vincent, and one for Rita. I think we'll spend one of Rita's and one of Vincent's. The reason is I want Vincent and Ashcan to have the most clues. It looks like they will actually be fighting the world render. So I'd prefer them to keep as many of those for re-rolls as possible. So that's why I've took one off Rita. So I hope Anthony doesn't mind. So we'll discard those two. And uh, yes. So even though it was a tentacle card, fortunately we had enough clues and we didn't get a disaster. So we can get rid of that and put the Laugh and Chuckle deck back. Okay, let's get rid of that as well. Put that out of the way. Oh, so there we go. We're doing pretty good. The only fly in the ointment that turn was Vincent losing his blessed condition, but he still got that elixir, so he'll possibly get it back. We should be able to get onto the World Render um, space, the pyramids, next turn with both Ashcan and with um, Vincent. If they are both blessed again, hopefully, then they've got magic weapons and they should be able to put a hurting on it. It is down to four toughness, remember, because of that righteous condition. So that is awesome. We only need to get four hits on it. And let's be honest, Ashcan Pete is just like... He's rolling thunder, so I'm pretty confident that next turn we should have this in the bag. Kill the world render, save the world, jobs are good in. So yes, very, very confident indeed. So hopefully we can wrap this up next turn, but you never know, something may happen. So we'll have to like keep the champagne on ice for a bit. But I, I pretty much think we've got this in the bag now. So, yes, excellent, excellent stuff. Okay, right. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all the views. Thanks for all the subscriptions. Thanks for all the help and support. Thank you for all the likes. Thank you for the dislikes. And as ever, if I've made a mess up somewhere, which is perfectly possible, if I've forgotten something or whatever the hell I do with my brain, um, please let me know and I will try and fix it for next turn. Okay, so, oh, anybody who's been across the board game links to upvote the site or watch a video over there, thank you very much. And similarly, BGG, if you've been over there and uh, upvoted a video or made a comment over there, thank you very much. As ever, thank you for all the comments on the YouTube channel itself. And uh, any, you know, tips or ideas, please let us know. We always want to hear good ideas. Um, anything else? Anybody who's interested in putting the name down for a future play-by video, I've had a few requests. Um, if you just pop across the two tube tables and just um, the link is, I put it in the um, top comment. Uh, just go across there and just register your interest and I'll put you on the waiting list, no problem. Okay, so that is it for turn 11 of Eldritch Horror and Cities in Ruin. I hope you join me for turn 12, where hopefully we will be celebrating some success. But we will see. Until then, this is me, Cat Weasel, signing off. Toodaloo! <laughs>